Have you ever wondered how neoconservatism has influenced U.S. policy? This question takes us into the heart of a pivotal ideological shift in the American political landscape. Born in the mid-20th century, neoconservatism emerged from the minds of intellectuals disillusioned with the liberal consensus of the time. The movement grew from a small group of thinkers to a significant force shaping U.S. policy. At the core of neoconservatism lie a few key principles, a strong belief in American exceptionalism, a proclivity for assertive foreign policy, and a commitment to free market capitalism. These principles guided the thoughts and actions of early influencers, such as Irving Kristol and Leo Strauss, who played instrumental roles in establishing the foundation of neoconservatism. As we delve deeper into this subject, we'll see how these principles have woven themselves into the fabric of American policy, shaping it in ways both subtle and profound. So, join us as we journey through the evolution of neoconservatism and its profound influence on U.S. policy. Neoconservatism didn't just appear overnight, it was a gradual process, filled with intriguing personalities and powerful ideologies. The rise of neoconservatism began to take form during the late 60s and early 70s. This was a period of immense political and social upheaval. The Vietnam War was in full swing, and the Cold War was casting a long shadow over international relations. Amidst this turmoil, a new political philosophy began to emerge. Two key figures stand out in the early development of neoconservatism, Irving Kristol and Norman Podoretz. Often dubbed the godfather of neoconservatism, Irving Kristol was a former Trotskyist turned conservative, who saw the need for a robust American foreign policy. He believed in the power of democratic capitalism and was a staunch opponent of communism. Through his writings, Kristol played a vital role in shaping the ideology of neoconservatism. Norman Podoretz, a contemporary of Kristol, was another influential figure in the movement. As the editor of Commentary magazine, Podoretz used his platform to articulate the principles of neoconservatism, advocating for a strong national defense and a proactive foreign policy. The Vietnam War and the Cold War had significant impacts on the development of neoconservatism. The Vietnam War, with its anti-war protests and social unrest, led many former liberals to question their beliefs. This disillusionment with the liberal establishment paved the way for the rise of neoconservatism. Meanwhile, the Cold War heightened the perceived threat of communism, reinforcing neoconservative beliefs in the necessity of a robust defense and foreign policy. Neoconservatives argued that America had a moral duty to spread democracy and combat totalitarian regimes, a stance that would significantly influence U.S. policy in the years to come. And so, neoconservatism began to take shape poised to make a significant impact on U.S. policy. The 1980s saw the real integration of neoconservative ideas into U.S. policy. This era was marked by the presidency of Ronald Reagan, a leader who was deeply influenced by neoconservative principles, particularly in the realm of foreign policy. Reagan's administration was driven by a strong belief in American exceptionalism and a commitment to the spread of democracy worldwide. This was reflected in his approach to the Cold War, his administration was not content with mere containment of the Soviet Union, instead, it actively sought to roll back communist influence wherever it could. This led to a more aggressive, interventionist foreign policy that was largely shaped by neoconservative thinking. One of the most notable instances of neoconservatism influencing U.S. policy during this time was the Iran-Contra affair. This was a clandestine operation that involved selling arms to Iran, which was then under an arms embargo and using the proceeds to fund anti-communist Contras in Nicaragua. This operation, while controversial, was driven by the neoconservative belief in the moral imperative of combating communism, even if it meant bending the rules. The end of the Cold War was also a significant event in this period. Many attribute the fall of the Soviet Union to the pressure applied by the Reagan administration's assertive foreign policy, heavily influenced by neoconservative ideologies. Reagan's famous call to the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, to tear down this wall, referring to the Berlin Wall, is often seen as emblematic of his neoconservative approach. By the time the 1980s came to a close, neoconservatism had become a powerful force in shaping U.S. policy. It wasn't just a political ideology anymore, it was a lens through which the world was viewed, a philosophy that guided decisions at the highest levels of government. Neoconservatism had firmly established its place in U.S. policy by the end of the 1980s. Its influence was far-reaching, 
shaping not only the policies of the Reagan administration, but also setting the tone for future administrations and their approach to foreign policy. The dawn of the 21st century saw neoconservatism at its peak. This period was characterized by a marked shift in American foreign policy, largely influenced by the tragic events of September 11, 2001. The response of the Bush administration to these attacks was to adopt a more aggressive, neoconservative stance on the world stage. This shift was most evident in the Iraq War, a conflict that was launched under the premise of preemptive action, a cornerstone of neoconservatism. The belief was that the United States had a moral duty to intervene globally to promote democracy and protect its national security. The Iraq War, however, was fraught with controversy, with critics arguing that the intelligence used to justify the invasion was flawed or misrepresented. The War on Terror also reflected the neoconservative influence. This global campaign, aimed at dismantling terrorist networks, was marked by its with us or against us rhetoric. It was a clear embodiment of the neoconservative principle of moral clarity, the idea that there is a clear right and wrong, and the United States, as a champion of freedom and democracy, is on the right side. However, these neoconservative policies were not without criticism. Critics argued that they were overly simplistic, ignored cultural complexities, and often resulted in unintended consequences. The Iraq War, for instance, not only failed to find weapons of mass destruction, but it also led to a power vacuum that further destabilized the Middle East. The War on Terror, on the other hand, was criticized for eroding civil liberties and for its ends justify the means approach. Ultimately, the neoconservative influence on early 21st century policy was profound. It shaped the way America engaged with the world, for better or worse, and left a lasting impact. Its legacy continues to be debated, with proponents arguing that it was necessary for national security and critics asserting that it led to reckless interventions and disregard for international law. Neoconservatism, for better or worse, had left an indelible mark on the 21st century. The influence of neoconservatism on U.S. policy continues to this day. Despite the end of the Bush administration, the echoes of neoconservative principles still reverberate through the halls of American power. These enduring principles, born from the minds of intellectuals and policymakers from decades past, continue to inform crucial decisions and shape the path of the nation. In the years following the Bush era, neoconservatism didn't simply fade into the annals of history. On the contrary, it adapted, evolved, and found new ways to make its presence felt. The principle of American exceptionalism, a cornerstone of neoconservative thought, has manifested in various ways throughout recent years. It can be seen in the continued commitment to maintaining a robust military presence around the world, a policy that echoes the neoconservative belief in the necessity of American power to uphold global order. Furthermore, the neoconservative emphasis on promoting democracy and human rights abroad is evident in the ongoing American diplomatic efforts. From imposing sanctions on nations with questionable human rights records to supporting democratic movements around the world, the guiding hand of neoconservatism is unmistakable. Moreover, the domestic sphere hasn't been untouched by neoconservatism's influence. The belief in limited government, deregulation, and free market capitalism remains prevalent. These principles have shaped economic policies, leading to tax cuts and deregulatory measures aimed at stimulating economic growth. Even in the realm of social issues, neoconservative principles have left their mark. The emphasis on traditional values and social order can be seen in debates over issues like abortion, LGBT rights, and religious freedom. These debates often reflect the neoconservative belief in preserving the social fabric of the nation. However, it's important to note that neoconservatism, like any ideology, isn't homogenous. There are varying degrees and interpretations of its principles. But the undeniable fact remains. Neoconservatism has left an indelible imprint on the American political landscape shaping the nation's policy both at home and abroad. And so, the legacy of neoconservatism continues to shape U.S. policy. So, what have we learned about neoconservatism and its influence on U.S. policy? We've traced the rise of neoconservatism, from its roots in the Cold War era to its powerful presence in the 21st century. We've examined how this ideology, born from a desire for a strong stance against communism, has shaped U.S. policy in significant ways. We've seen how neoconservatism's emphasis on American exceptionalism and the use of military power
has informed decisions from foreign interventions to domestic policies. We've also delved into the legacy of neoconservatism, acknowledging the controversial nature of its influence. Yet, despite varying opinions, it's undeniable that neoconservatism has left an indelible mark on the fabric of U.S. policymaking. It's a testament to the power of ideas and how they can shape the course of nations. As we look to the future, the influence of neoconservatism on U.S. policy remains a fascinating area of study. Thank you for joining us on this journey.